Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode where I expose the hypocrisies of the mainstream media Yeah buddy! And in this episode, I've got a belter Ah ah, that's my dog! It was 2017 in a mosque in Quebec, Canada where a terrorist gunned down six Muslims, yeah? and he paralyzed and injured five others in the process. You heard from Ayman Durbali in our story a moment ago. He was shot seven times during the attack. He's paralyzed now from the chest down. Cretans like this are normally locked up, yeah? And for the general public, this is not something that needs to be followed up because most often eventually justice gets served. <laughs> But it seems that now even that's changing as well. So this animal had his sentence reduced because the judge called it cruel and inhumane. What? Hang on just a minute. Isn't killing and paralyzing people in a sanctuary of worship and peace inhumane and cruel? Not the actual punishing bit. But ah uh, yes, when the terrorist happens to be white, then we start hearing the analysis of his childhood. Yes, of his motives. Yes, and of course his mental health. Yeah, all of this gets scrutinized and analyzed in the mainstream media. In spite of what has been said about me, I am not a terrorist nor an Islamophobe. Rather, a person who is carried away by fear. I still remember the New Zealand terrorist. There was a front page where he was called an angelic boy. Don't try it boy. But of course if it's any other race then not only will he be blamed but his race and religion will be dragged in with him as well. After Islamic extremists attacked its editorial offices. In, in case you think I'm exaggerating, in 2015 there was a white terrorist by the name of Dylan Roof who gunned down nine black people in a church. After he was done he complained to the police that he was feeling hungry. Rather than getting pistol whipped on his left eye, he was actually taken to Burger King. Honestly, honestly, this is stand-up material right here. But the beauty of Tommy Robinson is you just can't get rid of him. Yeah, he's like a turd that you just can't seem to flush away. <laughs> Reality has become stand-up and whilst people are doing stand-up, they're talking about the things that need to be talked about. You're not supposed to do this in my business. I'm up here doing something that nobody else in this business has the balls to do. I'm telling you something that you need to know. I'm trying to explain to you what you're seeing. You don't understand what you're seeing. I am publicly flogging a network. People who harm minorities are getting reduced sentences, are being treated to Burger King meals. I swear it's like they're encouraging violence towards minorities. And if there's more cases that start emerging like this, people are going to stop taking the law seriously. And if that happens, then anarchy, chaos. Upset the established order and everything becomes chaos. And let's see if LBC spends days talking about this story and getting people to call in. We'll see if BBC do a question time and you know Newsnight or Panorama do their specials. Don't hold your breath. Stories like this get brushed under the carpet because let's face it, it doesn't meet the media narrative here. Yeah? And these case studies are good. Keep them, keep them in the bank. Because the next time somebody calls you a terrorist, I'm sorry, that just doesn't work anymore. Because that term has only been reserved for non-white people and maybe a couple of white people just so the ethnic minorities don't get suspicious. Some of you guys ask about book recommendations and a brilliant book has been written about Islam and politics and what's going on. I haven't been paid to promote it which all the while makes this a genuine and honest plug.